Hello, this is Ina from Books and Boy Bands, where we talk about books and boy bands. Today, I have a bookish video for you, something that I'm very, very excited to talk about and hope you'll be as excited as me. And it's my 2022 reading statistics. So every year, readers like you and me, we go to Goodreads or I guess Storygraph for others and we set our reading goals and... These apps also give you a Spotify wrapped version of it where you can look at your year in books and see um, some superlatives and some statistics. But I've always um, felt like these numbers and these statistics are lacking. So I decided to create my own reading tracker. I think I started in 2020 and I added some things that are interesting to me. Some things that I would like to know about in terms of my reading behavior like genres, of star ratings and so much more that we'll be talking about later so every year it changes because what i'm interested in changes as well so i'm very very excited to share with you these things these charts and numbers and data that i have compiled all across 2022 i'll be going back and forth with the goodreads year in books and my own personal data i'll just be sharing it with you here so if you're a fan of numbers and charts i hope you enjoy geeking out with me today so yeah let's start so in the start of the year i decided to go with my go-to reading goal for every year and it's 104 books across the year because I think it's the easiest goal to achieve. If you look at it simply or reduce it into simple terms, you just have to read two books a week. And I've always thought that it's a doable, possible, achievable goal. Though in 2022, if you would be observing my reading, you'll see that it's not always possible. And sometimes life happens and you won't be able to hit your goals. But there are, the, there are great months um compared to worse months so they b just balance it all out and yeah in 2022 i'm very proud to say that i failed my reading challenge i wasn't able to hit my goal of 104 by just four books which is you know okay and normal i really wanted to like push through with december but there's just so many things happening that you know during the holidays or i originally planned on like sprinting and reading short books just to finish my reading challenge it didn't happen and we ended up with 100 books which i think was just enough and i still was able to spend time with my loved ones and enjoy the holidays so there i ended 2022 with 100 books and according to goodreads i had 32,817 pages read in my own personal tracker it's a little different it's still 32,800, but we had an extra 49 pages so i don't know which is more accurate but there so aside from looking at it um, as a whole in a year, I also decided to track it month by month. And as you can see here, the best month of the year for me was February. Though it's the shortest month, I was able to read 16 books. And um, honestly, at the start of the year, January and February, I really had high hopes because I was really reading so much and doing content and very feeling very hopeful that 2022 would be my best reading year and as you can see starting from march everything changed and i will tell you the main reason why um december of 2021st i think or november of 2021st my sister started to get into bts the k-pop group and she was slowly trying to convince me and my family to um, also check out their music and get to know them so it was november december january february of really trying to um, introduce them to me and i was happy being a casual fan and then march came and that was the permission to dance um, live viewing in the cinemas and i didn't sleep until three in the morning to secure tickets for my sister and me and I got to watch these guys live and that changed everything. Especially in the first few months of 2022, I literally spent all my day consuming BTS content. And they have 10 years worth of it. I've still not finished everything after a year. So imagine how much content there is. And that also led to my reading slump. So as you can see, um, most of my reading throughout the year was just 
you know, a single digit accomplishment throughout the month. But I don't regret anything. 2022 has been one of my best years, one of my happiest years. And yeah, I'm very, very thankful that I met the boys and that also caused the channel rebrand to books and boy bands. But yeah, as you can see, the worst month was April for, it was April because I only ended up reading one single book. And I think that was when the soup, when I fell so deep into the rabbit hole that I was in TikTok, YouTube, I was consuming all of their contents, buying all of their um, backlist merch and watching as much as I can. So there, I, ha I had a single book read at that time. But, um, you know, in June, if you are an army, you know, the festa dinner, the announcement that they would be on break and do solo projects was traumatizing to me. That led me into reading 15 books. Yeah, that's self-explanatory. I needed an escape. And then I went back again to single digits as, you know, everything calmed down and I understood where they're coming from. But again, in December, where, where, where I noticed that I won't be hitting my Goodreads goal if I don't move or don't read, I got into the double digits again and I read 13 books for the month of December. It wasn't enough. I needed 17. But, you know, we reach 100. It's, it's a good number. So there. Now let's go to now let's go to my average book length in 2022. So Goodreads give you the summary out of all the books you've read and I got 328 pages which I think is normal just the average length of book because it's usually around 300 pages, right? So I'm happy with that and I'm not really the person who, you know, grabs tomes like literally very very thick books. I'm not a fan of high fantasy which is usually the genre I think that has the thickest books i also don't read short books so yeah and i you know how much i love romances and thrillers that's everything i consume and that usually is in the 300 page range so there's nothing um, weird about it then i also track the average days it takes for me to finish a book and um, I consume books in different ways, audiobooks, physical books, and ebooks on my Kindle. So it's a really wide range and maybe someday in the future I'll, I'll track the average days it takes for me to finish a book based on the format. But for now, um, according to my tracker, I it takes me seven days or a week to finish a book. And I'm sure um, you notice how... Here in my table, it just usually takes me four to five days to finish a single book. But in April, where my reading stump was like in the full um, speed, <laughs> it took me 26 days to finish a book. And that ruined the average. It messed up the entire thing. But anyway, I think it's nice to see how your mood as a mood reader or the situations in your life also change how fast or slow you read a book aside of course from the quality of the books that you choose so basing on this i think i experienced my best reading month in um in june it took me just three days 3.47 days to finish a book so there it's an interesting statistic and here we also have Goodreads provide you with your average rating for 2022. It's 3.7 stars or actually here in my monthly tracker, it's 3.67 stars. And yeah, I don't usually give out one star or two star ratings to books because I usually um, stay within my comfort genres and comfort authors. But um, this year, I have noticed that I gave less five stars two books i have i think 23 or 24 five stars um which i think is still a good number it's one fourth of all the books i read that i really really liked and yeah, i have a couple um low ratings and a lot of average reads for 2022 like if i when i look back there's a lot of books that i had high hopes for but just ended up just okay so yeah i think it's a just okay year at 3.67 stars there so now let's go back to Goodreads year in books and it has some superlatives. It says here that my shortest book for 2022 is Sidetrack by S.T. Abby. It's part of that famous series 
that blew up on book talk about this FBI agent and a serial killer. The girl is a serial killer, the FBI agent is trying to hunt a serial killer, and it's actually his girlfriend. So it's a five part series, very, very short um, novellas, and it, it's, it was my attempt of course, to hit my reading goals in December. So I decided to pick up this series. Um, I didn't finish it. It would. It was supposed to help me hit the 104. I didn't finish the series. I ended up the third installment. So I still have two to go. And yeah, that's the shortest read. The longest book I read was 512 pages. And it's The Vacation by John Mars. It's a mystery thriller. Honestly, I didn't like it. I remember giving it two stars. Because I thought that it was unnecessarily long. There were so many characters in the book and it can be quite confusing especially if you read it on audio format like me. But yeah, there. It's one of the longest reads I had of the year at 512 pages. Now the most popular book in the Goodreads site that I was able to read last year was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Everybody on the bookish communities read this one it's most shelved at 1.6 million people having it on their goodreads shelf and imagine everybody else who didn't have goodreads who read it it took the romance community by storm a lot of people loved it a lot of people hated it too and that's just a normal thing for like general public mainstream popular books i for one loved it uh, many people commented that it read like a fanfic and as a fanfic reader of course i would love this one i was hooked and even my non-reader sister loved this one so yeah i really really love the love hypothesis i don't need to hype it up anymore and yeah i hope though that the other books by the author um would also have the same reception i haven't read her recent releases yet but yeah i have high hopes the least shelved book i have is a Harlequin Blaze pocketbook romance and it's The Sweetest Taboo by Alison Kell. Only 510 people have this book on their shelves. It's just a random audiobook I decided to pick up on script. It's a short one because it's a Harlequin romance. So again, it was a December read because I was rushing with my reading goals. Now the book I read with the highest rating on Goodreads at 4.56 average, it's still by Kennedy Ryan. So Kennedy Ryan is a romance author. I discovered her this 2022. Um, I loved it. It's a contemporary romance usually in um, series with, what do you call this? The interconnected series. Like they're in the same universe but not necessarily about the same people. But she also has a series about the same people. Yeah, but anyway, so there we have Still by Kennedy Rye. It's one of my best best reads of the year. I think I also gave it five stars because um, I loved the character development. I loved how this is not an escapism book. This is a realistic book because there are really heavy themes. You would cry. You would um, have a heavy heart while reading it. But um, we also will be rooting for these amazing people and these amazing characters. So there. So that's it for my good reads, but now let's go to some of the things I track. Usually, I, I, I love knowing about the Filipino books I read across the year because it, it has been one of my goals. But again, since 2022 was one of my hardest reading years, um, I was only able to read two. And hopefully, this 2023, this things change. So I also track author ethnicity because I was... I had goals on reading more Asian authored books as well. So here in 2022, I was only able to read nine books by black authors, four books by Latinx authors, and eight books by Asian authors. And the rest are white. <laughs> as you can see by the graph, it's not my best um, diverse reading year. And hopefully that changes in 2023. And another reason why this happened is, as you can see here in the formats, so as you can see, based on my chart of the formats of the books I read, I read seven ebooks in 2022, six um, physical books, and the rest, 87, a whopping 87 audiobooks. Audiobooks saved my 2022. I'm happy. Um, there are books really, I think, that are meant for audio, but... Again, it's the reason also why personally I thought 2022 was my worst reading year because it's not as diverse or it's not as spread out as my usual journeys. But yeah, thank God for audiobooks. Thank God for Scribd. I always, always will be like 
rallying for people to go on Scribd because you not only get access to ebooks but also get access to a wide range of audiobooks. So there. There was also a big change in terms of the audiences or the target age group on the books I've been reading. In 2022, I read 85 adult books and 15 young adult books. I didn't get the chance to read some middle grade. And yeah, as you can see, I've been leaning towards adult books, uh, maybe because I'm getting older, simply, and I relate more to adult characters now than young adult characters. Now, for the genres read, it's still predominantly contemporary romance. I read 64 contemporary romance books, 26 mystery thrillers. I read four historical romances, so again, still romance. I read three um, contemporary or literary fiction books. I read one historical fiction book, I read one poetry book, and one fantasy book. So, the um, variety and genre started in January and, and February, I think. And then, when I hit my reading slump, I decided to just go to my comfort genres or else I won't be able to absorb anything. But this year, hopefully, I get to spread it out a little bit. And... 2022 was also a year for discovering new authors. Out of all the 100 books I read, I 60 of those were written by authors who are new to me, which I think is fun. It's discovering new authors and um, exploring different writing styles that makes reading very exciting. So there. I read also 19 books by people I read multiple times, 3 books by my autobi authors, and 18 books by people uh, by authors who I read once before. In terms of series and standalones, I read 58 standalones and 42 books as part that are part of a series. So that's a good, I think, equal division. And in terms of copy sources, I have um, read five books that I personally bought, six books that are ARCs, Five books on Kindle Unlimited and 84 books on Scribd. Again, Scribd is my savior. You can use my code below if you want to try it out and get 60 days for free. It's amazing. And yeah, if you look at the books by publication year, the books I read the most were from 2021. For the current year, I only read 14 for 2022. And 2020 also is a good candidate at 16 books, 2019 10 books, 2018 14 books, and lower numbers across. The oldest book that I was able to pick out was from 1995, and I think it's a, a historical romance. And then lastly, a, a look at the five stars. So again, like I mentioned, I just had 23 five-star books for 2022, and I'll be talking about those books in another video. So I looked at them and I had 15 romance books and then the rest are of different genres. So I think I'll be separating them in two different videos so the romance lovers can focus on the romance and um, I can share the other books I loved in another video. And then for four stars, I gave it to 33 books and 32 books got three stars. For the first time, I gave 10 books two stars and one book one star i'm very very surprised because i don't usually give out two two stars so maybe it wasn't really that good of a year but yeah i i mean 33 32 and 23 so it's still a large chunk of reads that made me happy made me feel okay so i guess that's still a win and those are all the things i track across the year and yeah it's very nice to look at these charts and um see how different i am like before i mentioned i i i don't really give out two stars to books i usually read young adult before and now it's mainly adult and of course i'm still loyal to contemporary romance and thrillers but um yeah it's nice to see how my reading behavior went so these are not technically my goals. I think some of the things I'm considering um, is of course to branch out a bit onto different genres, to branch out a bit as well on different author ethnicities, to read at least more Fil Filipino written books, and I th think I would also love to read more backlist books, like not just from the past year or the past couple of years, but really 
those in the early 2000s, early 2010s, or maybe even books from the 90s. So that's quite a challenge and very, very exciting to consider. But yeah, those are all my reading statistics for 2023. I'm very, very happy that I got to share them with you. If you had a similar um, reading tracker um, or reading wrap-up, whether it's a blog post, an Instagram post, a booktube video, or a book talk video, please do share them with me because as much as I love doing this, I also love watching these type of videos as well. So share them with me in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!